Buongiorno a tutti ragazzi e bentornati sul canale con un nuovo video. Qualche settimana fa, anzi praticamente due mesi fa, ho postato delle storie su Instagram perché mi era venuta un'idea. Sapete che sono arrivato in Inghilterra, l'avete visto dai precedenti video. Qui in Inghilterra c'è una persona, chi mi segue su Instagram lo sa, che va in moto da più di 60 anni. Infatti se vi state domandando perché ci stanno due moto, effettivamente è perché una è la sua, sapete che questa è la mia. E lui all'età di 80 anni ancora ci va ogni tanto, un po' di meno. Però ancora ci va. Quindi che cosa ho fatto? Sulle storie Instagram vi ho detto, fatemi una domanda, se avete qualche curiosità, una cosa che chiedereste a una persona di 80 anni con 60 anni di esperienza sulle spalle. Tanti di voi mi hanno fatto delle domande, io ne ho selezionate 10. E quindi il video di oggi sarà leggermente diverso, non sto intutato col completo, con gli stivali, con niente. Ci cioè, sederemo su queste due sedie e intervisteremo lui. Lui si chiama Dave, viene dal Galles, ma adesso vive in un quartiere, un villaggio inglese che si chiama Axbridge. E qui c'è sta sta scatola, c'è sta un po' di roba dentro. E adesso lo andiamo a vedere, quindi lo facciamo entrare. Lui è Dave. My name is Dave and I live in Somerset in England and I've been a motorcyclist since the 1960s. È un motociclista dal 1960, quindi come vi dicevo prima, più di 60 anni. Are you ready for the first question? I'm ready. Prima domanda di Salvatore, quale moto ti è rimasta più nel cuore e perché proprio qualcosa di vecchio e non robaccia odierna? So the first question is, it's kind of funny, because he says, which motorbike left a mark in your heart and why exactly something old and not this <laughs> modern crap <laughs> okay probably my favorite bike in recent times was a norton dominator which was a 500 cc twin because i'd given up motorcycling for a while and met a friend mm -hmm. at work who was very keen on nortons he had lots of nortons around the place Yeah. And he sold me, for very little money, enough parts to build a Norton motorbike. So I put it all together oh, yeah. in the garage. And this was a Norton Dominator 500cc, model 88. And I used it to ride to work whenever yeah. I could. I just grew to love it. Oh. It was my first Norton, and it's the one that made a big impact on me. The second one is not a question, okay? okay. A guy says, I admire you, just for getting to 8 years old and riding for more than 60 years. Okay, yes, yes. La terza è di Andrea. So the second question is, the third actually, the best moment of your life on the motorbike, what did you feel like? Talking about feelings. Hmm, the best moment of my life on a motorbike. There's been so many. Is it? <laughs> yeah, the long ride down into South Wales where the chain broke halfway through the journey. Okay. <laughs> That was a Saturday morning going away for a long weekend with a friend and we rode down into Wales and had a great time there. Once the chain was repaired, that's where we had to wait for the motorcycle shop to open in the morning because yeah. we were so early. <laughs> to get the bits to repair the chain. We were in a place called Carmarthen in South Wales, just riding through the town, yeah. and suddenly, chain's gone, no power. Were you speeding or? No, no, yeah. just riding normally. It's good you, you broke it, or it broke, when you were close to the village. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. If course. you were lost in, in, a, in the countryside, then it, it would have been worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Terza domanda di Giannini. Hai guidato nel deserto? Have you ever driven or ridden in the desert? Never. Would you like to? Or would you have liked to? I would have liked to try it. Mm. Yeah, I would have liked to try it. And I suppose the nearest thing to it would be riding on fields, grass, yeah. mud, yeah. which I did a lot. But okay. I never tried the desert. Which motorbike did you ride on mud? The 250 Aerial, 250cc Aerial, which was my first ever bike, which I had before I was old enough to ride on the road. What year was it made in? 1932. God. <laughs> Very modern. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Come potete immaginare, ha guidato un sacco di moto antiche, giustamente. And some of the some of the motorbikes you've ridden had the the plate like on the front wheel, right? Yes, over the front mudguard. Okay. Yes, that's right. Do you remember when they decided to remove it? Or in the 1970s, I think. For safety? Yeah, yeah, because it was called a kidney slicer. That means that if you hit a pedestrian, yeah, oh. that blade slice through them. Oh. oh, it was the right height. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> yeah. If you didn't like somebody, <laughs> you would just go. So through. yeah, it was danger. It was it was a safety hazard. So they had to do away with that front okay. number plate. A lot of people in the early days would take that front number plate off mm -hmm. and fit it. Across the, across the fork. Mm. But that was more of a fashion thing than a legal requirement. Yeah. But okay. eventually it became illegal to have that front okay. number plate. Okay, that's my brother. Yeah. Asking, where would you go now? I would ride up over the Mendip Hills, Somerset and Dorset. Because it's nice open roads, lots of nice bends, not much traffic. That's just what I would enjoy doing. Okay. Perhaps 50 miles, 
Just round and round. Marco ci chiede qual è stata la più grande lezione di vita che hai appreso incontrando motociclisti e viaggiando in 60 anni. So, which is the biggest lesson that you learned from other motorcyclists, meeting them and traveling in six years? Mm. To be very careful about car drivers. Okay. <laughs> who don't don't see motorcyclists yeah. and will pull out in front of you. And the worst accident I had mm -hmm. was where a car driver drove into the side of me. I was on the main road. Oh, did he like literally hit you? Yeah, came out of a junction and, and rode, drove into me and hit the front of the bike. Okay. Just missed my knee. Oh. <laughs> I went over the top. <ride> so be, be wary of car yeah, yeah. Yeah. Alcune volte noi pure esageriamo quando facciamo dei sorpassi o ci prendiamo dei rischi un po' inutili, però questo è il consiglio, attenti. La prossima domanda è where would you have liked to go, but you've never had the chance to? I suppose I'd like to have gone to Germany on the motorbike because of the very good roads and mm -hmm. no speed limits at the time. So <ride> yeah. You could just ride. Okay. Yeah, perhaps I'd like to have gone to Germany. Germany? Yeah, okay. yeah. La domanda successiva è qual è stata la sua prima moto? Però qua già ci ha risposto in un certo modo. So this question is which was your first motorbike? But you already answered that question okay. saying it was the Ariel 250C. The, that's right. That's the first motorbike I owned but couldn't ride on the road. Rode it on the fields, the Ariel. And then the first motorbike I had on the road was a 250cc BSA. BSA, okay. Yeah. Which a few days ago you were explaining BSA stands for British Small Arms and that's because they used to make guns for the British Army. So okay. they were British small arms. Royal Enfield yeah. is also an arm. Oh, so they were like competitors. Very, very similar. All right, so these are the questions that I got. Now, we're going to jump onto the gear you had. Okay. Praticamente nella scatola che abbiamo qua davanti ci stanno dei caschi che lui utilizzava. Noi al giorno d'oggi abbiamo la fibra di vetro, fibra di carbonio, di carbo con 200.000 cose. Questi qui erano molto, molto più semplici. So, this, it was, no, this wasn't your first helmet. No, that wasn't my first. No, that was the one I wore from around 1969 till about 1974. Cool. <laughs> okay, it's made from fiberglass. Fiberglass, yes, mm -hmm. and you colored it. I colored it, cool. I painted it, yep. That's the, what we used to call a jet helmet, okay. because the first ones before that were just like that, just basic. Like that. <laughs> it's like going to, to war with this one. Yes, that's all it was. And you didn't... And the smell from them is like... Yes, <laughs> and you didn't have the visor, you had the goggles. <laughs> so would you wear... You would have worn these with this that. one, right? With that, yeah. Yeah, so this okay. is how it went. Yeah. Quindi questo qua è stato il suo primo casco di sempre, dentro ci sta il sughero e, e con questo ci indossava questi occhiali, praticamente, so, i classici occhiali vecchio stile. And this, this is just a makeshift way of keeping the visor from flapping around on the okay. helmet, yes. <laughs> That's amazing. You also have your, your jacket, right? I have my jacket, yeah. yes. Would you like to see it? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> okay, I'll go and get the jacket. Yeah. A few moments later. So this is your jacket. Yep. <laughs> From the 1960s. 1960s and 1970s, yes. <laughs> the jacket was a 50 anni. It still fits. <laughs> That's perfect. Questo qui è un... Uh, is it a barber? Yes. È una cerata praticamente. It's wax, right? <laughs> That's amazing. Well, thanks a lot for everything. And I'll see, you, I'll see you soon on the motorbike. Thank you. <laughs> allora salutiamo tutti quanti Dave e noi ci vediamo direttamente domenica prossima. Spero che il video vi sia piaciuto, è una cosa differente. E mi raccomando, ci vediamo nel prossimo episodio. Arrivederci. Bye! <laughs>